What's up you guys, welcome back to Master Tech, and in today's video, we're going to talk about the IEC 61131 programming languages. These are the five standard programming languages you're likely to see as an automation or controls engineer. So in this video, we're not gonna do a long form code tutorial or any sort of step-by-step -step DIY process, but we are going to talk about something that's uh, pretty near and dear to my heart, which is automation and controls engineering. That's what I do. And I know a lot of people have found the channel from my video, top five things you need to know as a controls and automation engineer. So hopefully this video can answer some of the most common questions around what these are, what programming languages automation and controls engineers need to be ready to see in the field, and then and also how likely you are to see them and what different applications you might use different ones for. And before we get totally into the video, thank you guys so much for 4,000 subscribers. We hit 4K on the channel this week, and that is absolutely unbelievable to me. If you wanna continue supporting the channel, be sure to leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel. We make a ton of great content, comes out every week. A special thank you to Dale T, my first Patreon supporter. If you guys wanna become super supporters of the channel as well, check out the Patreon link below this video. Super excited to see where we go in the next year, but without any further ado, let's dive into the content of this video. So I know just the name IEC 61131 can be a little bit confusing, but IEC is just International Electrotechnical Committee. They are sort of regulators and moderators of a lot of uh, specifics and standards in the world of industrial electronics and controls and automation. You don't really have to worry too much about the numbers or the letters. You just need to know what these different uh, programming languages are and when you're most likely to encounter them in the field. So let's start with my personal favorite and potentially the most common one which is ladder so ladder diagram ladder logic or just sometimes abbreviated LD is uh, essentially the first PLC programming language that ever came up uh, sort of organically because it looks a lot like um, electronic relay schematics so in the old days before we had PLCs dedicated to running automation um, you would read sort of primitive controls maps as schematics of different relays. So you could, for example, have a relay that would check to see if a button was pressed and if maybe some something in the field like a high pressure switch was met. And if those were both true, the relay would pull in and then something else would happen downstream of it. And so a standard programmer might think of this as like a series of and or gates to do like binary logic. In ladder logic, it's almost like you could trade a flow of electricity through your program. So this is why ladder logic looks sort of like a ladder when you stare at it. It's rung after rung after rung. And the individual modules all sort of spawned from the idea that you had relays. So the two most common ones are like examine if close and examine if open, which is basically a if or an if not. So it's basically if condition is a one or if condition is a zero. And that's 90% of how you do uh, Boolean checking, just series of ifs and if nots. Uh, and then to turn on Boolean conditions, you really just need to know the difference between like an OTE, which is a energize the whole time this rung is true, versus like an OTL and an OTU pair, which is latching and unlatching a binary condition when something is true. Now, obviously processes are a lot more complicated than binary logic in a lot of scenarios. So essentially what that means is you also have things like greater than, less than, limits where you check between values, and then you can also move numerical values into uh, numerical variables. So you don't just have binary logic in ladder, you have all the sort of standard formats that you'd have in any other programming language. If you understand general programming types, you'll be able to pick up what these separate variable types mean pretty quickly and pretty easily. But ladder logic is extremely common. It's also super powerful and it's pretty easy for people who don't have a computer science background, but maybe are more familiar with the electronic side, or frankly, they don't have a programming background at all. Ladder logic is super logical. I really like it. Almost every major PLC manufacturer supports some form of ladder logic using these same basic building blocks. So as a controls and automation engineer, you are 
super likely to need to become pretty familiar with ladder logic. Now for the one I consider second most common, some people might debate with me here, but I think uh, the function block diagram, it's essentially more free form than uh, like traditional ladder logic. You just basically have a blank page of workspace and you drop blocks in there that you want to do different functions. And typically you tie their inputs and outputs to different process conditions. Some of the more common ones for this would be like totalizers. A lot of the time a totalizer block that would monitor flow over a period of time and continually add to see how much total flow you had in that time. You would maybe have this floating function block diagram for a totalizer. You would tie a start command, a stop command, a reset command, as well as potentially like uh, your input signal, so your actual raw flow meter signal. You could pass it through some sort of like time scale or multiplier, but it's just where having all of the conditions that control the totalizer and all of the outputs that you could do using the totalizer in one spot is just super powerful. I'm only using totalizer as one example. Function block diagram, its advantages are you can see all of the components that will control a block, a complicated block like a totalizer in one location. You can also map out common programming things like AND gates, OR gates, uh, XOR gates, NOTs, whatever, Boolean uh, control in these as well. The disadvantages are it starts to get very hard to read a logical sequence of things happening if you get too far down and too long into one function block diagram. So you need to start partitioning it off and making a separate FBD for each uh, major function that happens. But I have seen systems where the entire thing is done in a uh, function block. I've seen things where the entire system is done in ladder. But it's important to understand what this looks like, how you control it, what it's used for, and also it's an important one to familiarize yourself with. The next language, SFC or sequential function chart, is absolutely the most common language you'll see if you run batch processes. So uh, GE's like FT batch and Rockwell's um, batch, as well as I think uh, a, just a lot of batch processes. The way you see a recipe is with a sequential fu function chart. And this one's really nice to kind of get an overarching view of your process because typically, you'll have layers where you can look at one SFC and you'll see like start phase, uh, validate parameters phase, manual additions phase, mix phase, uh, automated additions phase, sample phase. And so you can look at a high level SFC and you can see the overall state of your project really quickly as it relates to your whole process. And then if you have questions about what's going on in one phase of that SFC, typically most software software supports you drilling in and inside one phase at your high level model, you could have a number of phases. And inside each of those phases, you could have a number of phases in there. It's definitely most commonly used in batch. Most PLCs themselves don't support a really robust like SFC without a software that you run and configure on an actual computer. So PLCs typically host mainly um, like ladder and FBD and even some of what we'll talk about next, which is structured text. But to do an SFC based control schematic, you're usually in like more of a distributed control system like DCS platform. And you usually have to put your SFC software, recipe editor, whatever on a computer other than your PLC. Again, most common place you'll see it is batch applications. Batch just means that you separate uh, all of your devices at the plant and your uh, series of instructions that control devices into phases. Phases still typically have to get represented as ladder in your PLCs. So an SFC is almost always accompanied by some form of ladder logic or structured text inside of a PLC. Not always. I'm trying to generalize and give you guys a quick summary, but that's a summary of SFC. So the next one, structured text, is a uh, probably the one that would look the most familiar to someone coming in with a programming background but not a controls background. Structured text really is what all programming languages are. I mean, it's a certain syntax of words and commands that will execute certain things in your code. Structured text is typically straightforward like saying set IO point status to digital output. Uh, set boolean command equal to one when condition is met. Like the actual 
text I'm not gonna spend too much time uh, digging into because it varies from manufacturer to manufacturer, controller to controller. So if I were to tell you a bunch of specific structured text, there's a solid chance it wouldn't apply to your specific manufacturer. But the documentation for what your manufacturer supports, what uh, whatever your site standard is, if you're doing a lot of structured text, then the controls at your plant probably got started by a group of people who are more comfortable with software and programming. So um, in general, PLC programmers, controls and automation engineers aren't gonna need to see a ton of structured text, but it is supported and it is one of the IEC 61131 languages. So it's important to know what it is. If you see it in an application, don't be blindsided by it. Not super common. If it's super common at your site, you proved me wrong. Let me know I was wrong in the comments below. But most of the time, the three we talked about before are gonna show up a lot more in your applications. Okay, and the fifth one is kind of neat here. It's instruction list, typically abbreviated IL. Um, and this one is gonna be really familiar for people who have done a lot of work with like six axis robots, or if you've done a lot of work with like CNC machines or 3D printers, instruction list is not too far off from structured text in that uh, it's really just words uh, th that kind of have some numbers mixed in to command your variables to different stuff. Whereas the first three languages we talked about were a lot more visual. But instruction list is basically uh, like machine code. So for like a robot or a CNC machine, it's often called G code, but it usually is a series of commands that run one after another. It's always gonna typically happen in uh, sequence, but a lot of the time you can have like, oh, if this condition then do this and jump to this rung, but if other condition, do this other thing, jump to this other rung. So it doesn't have to be linear, but typically it's in an order that makes sense that you would typically see it sequentially. And the most common applications are for things where you need position control in 3D space. Uh, so you're controlling three or more uh, axes and you would typically say, okay, go to certain position. All right, turn on your tool, whether it's cutting or drilling or welding or whatever, and then your tool's on. Okay, move from point A down to your thing that you're operating on. Okay, now move over to point B with your tool on. Okay, now turn your tool off and lift up. Okay, now go back to your home spot. A conveyor will turn on, move the next piece in. So it's pretty common on like assembly line where you have a lot of advanced like robotics or uh, motion control. Uh, it's normal to see instruction list but again this is sort of more common in robotics even than you would see it in controls and automation so it is one of the IEC 61131 languages that's why we're talking about it the first three languages ladder FBD and F uh, SFC, so function block diagram and sequential flow chart. Those are the three most common ones that you'll see in your day to day as a like PLC programmer or uh, controls and automation engineer. But if you're more of a mechatronics or robotics hybrid, or that's a field you're interested in, interested in it's definitely worth getting familiar with the other two as well. And in general, the more well-rounded you are as an engineer, uh, the better you're gonna do in your field. So thank you guys so much for watching. I know a lot of the content on the channel is Python and programming, um, and I know not too many of you guys might be automation and controls engineers, but uh, again, I think being a well-rounded engineer is the best thing you can do. So I hope you found this useful. If there's more stuff you'd like to know about this field, let me know about in the comments below. If I get enough interest and enough questions on the world of controls and automation, I can absolutely make another video on those topics. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you again for 4,000 subscribers. It's amazing growth on the channel. I appreciate all of you guys. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, help me out a lot. Until next time, good luck with your jobs, good luck with your projects. Thanks for watching. Bye.